Uh, thank you, Professor Burke, for the kind introduction. I would firstly like to thank the Brain Foundation, its donors, sponsors, committee members and staff uh, for the privilege of receiving this very generous research gift, uh, for which I'm very grateful. I'm fortunate to work, uh, as Professor Burke mentioned, uh, with a wonderful team at the Movement Disorders Unit at Westmead Hospital, which is in fact in Sydney. And I would like to thank my co-investigators and PhD supervisors, Associate Professor Victor Fung, Dr Neil Mahant, and Professor Steve Vucic for their help and mentorship. I'm even more fortunate to have a wonderful and supportive family, and I would like to acknowledge their support. This research gift provides a great boost to our research on tremor and its diagnosis and classification. Tremor is a common human experience, and I think most of us in the room could probably think of some stressful moment in our lives, perhaps giving a public speech or waiting to give a public speech, when we developed some minor trembling of our hands or of our voice. But in some people, tremor goes beyond these rarefied circumstances and invades day-to-day -day life. So our patients come to clinic and they tell us that their hands shake so much that they can't write or even sign their name, that they can't eat with a knife and fork or drink out of a cup and they avoid restaurants at all costs, uh, or even that they've had to give up their job, their livelihood or their hobbies as a result of tremor. And unfortunately, tremor is also a common problem. If we combine the two commonest causes of tremor, namely essential tremor and Parkinson's disease, it accounts for about a percentage point of the population, which is over 240,000 Australians. At present, treatments for tremor can be roughly divided into medication treatments, which are only modestly effective and have their own side effects, and surgical treatments such as deep brain stimulation, which is very effective but invasive and involves brain surgery. So how can we develop better treatments? A key barrier to progress is not having a robust and evidence-based way of diagnosing and classifying patients with tremor. Uh, there's no single diagnostic test to determine the cause or type of tremor. And even in 2017, researchers in the literature continue to refer tre uh, classify tremor according to different criteria. And unless we're all talking about the same thing, it's very hard for us to learn from the research work that gets done, and that includes clinical trials of new treatments. So our work involves studying the clinical features of patients with tremor, and then recording the proper properties of the tremor objectively, using sensors that we apply on the skin to measure the amplitude and frequency of the tremor, so those are accelerometers, and other sensors on the skin to measure the behavior and bursting activity of the muscles beneath the skin that generate the tremor. We hope that by applying a statistical technique known as cluster analysis to the data that we collect, that we can identify different subgroups of patients with tremor who behave in a similar way and hopefully respond to treatment in a similar way. In the future, we hope that this work might provide the basis for clinical trials of new treatments, uh, such as the current ongoing trial of botulinum toxin for upper limb tremor, which we're conducting at Westmead Hospital. Uh, our overarching goal is to provide better care and treatment for our patients with tremor to help them do the things that they want to do in life, and we are very grateful to the Brain Foundation for its help in reaching this goal. Thank you.